Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I'm going to be doing another soldering assembly video. This particular video is going to be dealing with my 22 gauge 2 lead double shielded cable. You can see it right here. I've got a GX16 3 pin connector in the rubber jaw vise. What I'm doing is assembling this cable to support a client's uh, relay system for his plasma. So again, uh, in order to assemble this cable, you're going to need a, a set of flush cutters. This is the way, again, that I choose to do it. And why I like flush cutters is you can get into areas to skin uh, leads much easier in certain aspects than auto, t auto uh, strippers or regular strippers for that matter. That's why, once again, I've included that in the kit. Um, as far as actually stripping the cable, because I get questions on this a lot, whether they, you know, how far back to strip, Again, I've worked with this cable quite some time, so I can do a 7.75 millimeter long uh, piece of the actual casing to strip back. Now, going that short makes it more tedious to work on the cable, certainly gives you a more professional finish because you're not going to have heat shrink going all the way back. On top of that, it will make it so that your GX16 connector, when fully assembled inside the hood, uh, the cable is not actually having a big piece of heat shrink or a big piece of casing missing. So again, uh, this I came up with from trial and error over the years of working with it. Again, you can see how small this is. If you're assembling a cable yourself and you've never done it, don't feel that you have to go this small. Once again, um, I've been working with this for a while. Just see what you can actually work with comfortably and go from there. Using heat shrink on the cable is not an issue. Um, that being said, you can see I did install a rubber grommet here. And what that rubber grommet does is it'll fall right into place right there into the hood. And this way, when I put the stress relief on, I'm not putting stress on the cable itself. And again, it'll just compress nicely and you'll have a perfect cable assembly when everything is done, should everything go as planned. So I'm doing this live. There is no retakes, just so everybody knows. Um, anybody doing videos understands how difficult that is, especially with all the tools I have before me. Uh, I'm gonna try to cover everything in great detail. You can see I've got the old trusty razor blade, single edge. Uh, nothing is uh, no real rocket science here as far as special technique other than being very careful when we make our incision into the casing of the cable we want to make sure that we don't go too deep because naturally we don't want to actually uh, cause any damage to our leads so again I make a slight incision I then move the actual template around so I'm set I can see the incision right there and now what I'm going to do is carefully work this incision all the way around the cable. Now the good thing about 22 gauge is it's very thin and very flexible even though it's double shielded. And what I do is I flex the cable and as I flex the cable you can see the stress from flexing simply breaks everything apart and you're basically set. Now what I like to do next is make a vertical incision not going too deep once again then I grab my trusty pick and again vertical pick love these picks uh, we're gonna come over here find that incision once again just give me a second I wish my eyes were as good as they used to be and now we come in and we pop it and you'll see she will peel basically like a banana so we're going right like there right like that so just snap right off and you can see now we've got our cable right underneath okay there's our leads you can see how nice and symmetrical everything came out that's why once again I prefer to use a single edge razor blade I have guys that want to use exactos whatever you're comfortable with again tomato tomato if you get the same result it's inevitable uh, it really doesn't matter let's just look at this now and you can see exactly what I mean here's our double shield uh, we've got our mylar foil and within the mylar foil on the exterior part of it you've got your tin braided copper okay now the tin braided copper we're going to formulate into a ground drain because this cable does not have a drain due to the thickness of the leads we just want to grab as much of this as possible and you want to allocate where your ground is going to be on your gx16 now you'll notice this is a three pin gx16 connector there's only two leads here, and I get guys that'll ask me all the time, why am I using a three-pin connector? The third pin, most of you already know, is for the ground drain. Because when this plugs into uh, the pass-through bulkhead uh, mat panel mount version of the GX16, it's going to pass through the enclosure right to the relay, 
and it will ground out. I always have mine ground out using tin braided copper on the chassis. Uh, you can also install a ground bar and have that third pin go right over with a lead to the ground bar and you're set. So you can see we've got everything pretty much separated here. And we'll just get through. We're gonna bring everything together now, nice and neat. And the reason I said you wanna look at where your third pin is, is you can start molding this because you know you're gonna need your leads long enough to hit them pins when we actually go to solder everything. So again, I'm coming in here. Bring it in nice and tight. Okay. You can see we've got our drain all set. Now what I'm going to do, again, this is my own preference. Everybody has their own preference. I'm turning on the soldering station now. She's going to start accelerating the heat herself up to 800. <clears throat> We're going to come over here with our Kester 186 flux. Once again, no clean flux. And you'll notice I'm only doing the tip. I do not want to go all the way down because I want flexibility. So if I solder all the way bent down, I'm not going to get the flexibility. And I really just want to keep these uh, intertwined leads now all the way together as far as the conductors on the drain. We're at 800 degrees. I'm going to see, do a uh, heat test. My heat test is real simple. I just brush it against the wet sponge. If I get a sizzle, I know I'm about there usually takes the iron maybe 30 to 40 seconds to heat up. Double check, there we go. Once again, carryover method, right in and done. Okay, real quick, both sides, you can see we're tinned and we're not all the way down once again on the actual base of the drain. This way we still have flexibility for bending and we're golden right there. Now what we're gonna do, carefully use our pick once again We'll open this up where the tin, the, the mylar foil is. We don't have to worry about anything with our drain because we've already uh, went through. The mylar foil is, thank God, uh, loose enough that we can just undo it. We want to clean everything as best we can, once again, with flush cutters. This is the beauty of using flush cutters. You can come in here, give yourself a nice, clean lead. Once again, bend them out of the way carefully. Come in again with the flush cutters. And you can go right up to the base without skinning any of those wires with them actual sharp uh, tips. When we come in, now I just fold everything back carefully. Once again, utilizing my pick set. And see how we just pull it back. Gentle. This way we get a nice, nice lead. I should say a bunch, bunch of leads. There we go. Now again, guys, I'm picky. Everybody does their own thing. This is the way I like to do it. You can see now we've got our leads all set. See how clean the, the uh, cable is. Everything here is now nice and set. Um, what you do want to do is make sure that inside your actual hood you have your insulator. Okay? I did this intentionally. I left it out. You can see what the insulator looks like because I get a lot of questions on this. You just slide it in. That insulator naturally will insulate your leads so you don't have to put heat shrink on these. So you just want to come in there, make sure everything is a go, double check all of the process. Now, whether you use a rubber grommet or not, that's up to you, but the insulator is a must. Um, again, all set to go now. Now we're going to start stripping leads. Now, many of you already realize there's no way in hell I'm going to use a set of auto strippers on leads that small. This is where skill comes in because if you use too much pressure with these, you're going to cut these off. Um, Again, I cannot emphasize enough, practice makes perfect. And this is where you'd really want to go slow and go through where you'd actually want to do the leads. Now you can come in here real easy. And all I'm doing is going around real easy, scoring the actual casing of the lead, and then we pull. And you can see, if you do it right and you go slow, again, do not use heavy pressure. I don't care what set of uh, flush cutters you're using, if you use too much pressure, you're definitely going to either damage the actual conductors or you're going to cut it off completely and that'll screw up and then you'll just keep having to go over everything. You can see we applied flux, let our iron heat up, once again she went to sleep. I have mine set to uh, sleep after a minute, so again it's totally up to you as to far as how you want to set the sleep mode up on your iron. Just clean everything, make sure we got a nice clean tip. And we're good there. Over. Done. Real quick. Real quick. 
you roll 10, you're ready to go there. We go to the next lead, we'll bend her out of the way carefully. We do not, one thing I will point out that you do not want to move these when uh, the actual casing is hot right after soldering because again, you want it to cool a little bit because you're gonna have heat transfer due to conduction just from you using such high heat on your iron using uh, solder. So again, take some time, don't move too quick. You don't want to destroy your casing's uh, shape. So just take your time. I'm gonna do the same thing. Come over here. I'm just gonna go around a couple times. Something else I like to do is just come up, pull, and you can see how easy this job becomes. Just take your time. Now, I'm not going to lie, many of you already realize 22 gauge leads, that is some small gauge wire. And if you're not comfortable working with this wire, don't even waste your time um, in the sense of buying it and practicing with it because this is a really expensive cable to practice with. I would practice on regular 22 gauge leads and you can go from there until you get comfortable skinning. Uh, once you do that, you can see right here we're set. I've already cleaned the iron too on the opposite side. I know there's some carbon on top. Just touch, touch done now you're tin you can see our casing is perfect we let everything dry and now this leads these leads I should say are now ready to be applied to our GS, GX16 3 pin connector again flexibility on this cable is ridiculous that's why I like 22 gauge when we're dealing with uh, a dry contact relay configuration like in many plasmas um, again dry contact means that you will not be utilizing voltage it's just completing uh, the circuits closing the circuit so to speak uh, I'm applying flux now on pin one, and we're just going to go around, and what we want to do now is organize where our leads are going to be. So we have one here on, on the far left bottom side, you can see we've got two, and then on the right side on the bottom we have three. So in essence, we're going to be crossing over here, and we're going to be having this right about there, and you can see that's going to give us basically our connection. So we're set there. And you can see how far in you can come with these leads. It really doesn't matter. The main thing is, is that everything reaches naturally the conductors on the unit. So now what we're going to do, just stay there, you're fine. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my end of the pick and it's round. And I'm just warping the lead over. So you can see I get a nice straight lead. Once I've got flux there, I'm going to naturally flux our lead again. So we know we've got plenty of flux on there. We want to make sure everything is clean and everything is going to stick nicely. Coming in with more light here. <clears throat> I'm going to come right over here. You can see everything is good. Now I'm going to apply some flux, or excuse me, some solder right to this. So we'll tin it. Done. We're all good to go there. Everything is tinned and ready to go. Once again, apply more flux. Done. And we'll move right in now with doing our soldering. The idea is, is to give yourself a nice fill all the way across. I'm gonna hit that one more time because I like it to bubble up just a hair. That's perfect. Do one more. Right there and just touch and you're done. And that's us. Now we'll do our cleaning like I did in the previous video. Once again, we've got our flux remover right here. I like keeping it in a bottle. Some guys use it, uh, again, depending on what application, they'll use it with uh, spray in spray format. I'm not into that. I go in here and I'm just going once again with the lead so we do not have any type of problem in the sense of dropping more and more hairs. If you do that that way and go with the grain, you're always going to find that your, your uh, cotton swab will last much longer. Now in this instance, you can see we've got solder there, but it's not filled. It has some solder, but I'm not happy with that. So I'm gonna add a little more solder, a little more flux, do the whole process one more time. Again, I'm doing this live, so it's no different than you guys would encounter. Come in, get that solder bead. Now we're perfect. And you can see we're back at where we should be with a nice clean lead that's perfectly tacked and you're all set there. We are now going to rotate our connector right over. We're going to come right here and you can see we're going to go right in, right here. OK. 
Okay, now this is where things get kind of hairy because everything is starting to become attached. A lot of guys panic now. They'll say, you know, they've got a lot, you know, only got two hands, so to speak. I love soft jaw vices for this reason. Much better support. Just be careful. You don't want to crush a connector. Once again, I'm on pin two now. I'm going to apply some flux. We're going to go through the whole process once again, very redundant, and go through our tinning process. There we go. Tin our conductor, move our other conductor out of the way. We're now tinned. Everything is set there. Apply more flux also on the conductor. Okay. Once again, we're going to use our actual pick to bend in. And come in just like that. You can see everything fits perfect. Just like that. Fill it with flux. Get your tools out of the way. Become as organized as possible. At least for me, it works that way. Not everybody. Come in, apply some uh, solder. Once again, we're going for a fill. That's perfect. Let it let it cool. Apply some more cleaner. Done. Flux remover for those of you just joining us. Clean it. Clean our film residue off. Once again, you can see me rotating with the actual solder. I'm going with it so I'm not at disturbing our casing. Everything is set there. Last terminal to contact will be, you can see how perfect that came out, now we're going to our drain. Okay, same process. Apply our flux to the conductor, tin it. That's all done. We're going to do our drain now. And this is where you want to be careful because, again, our drain is very thin here. Um, a lot of guys realize that after the fact. If you've never worked with shielded cable before, you're in for a treat because it is a unique experience for many of you as you do it. You'll figure that out. Okay, we're good there. Now, the idea is as I go to do this, you want to make sure that not only that lead is coming in and pre preferably as straight as possible. You don't want stress on it. Sometimes guys will solder way up here and you'll notice you're putting stress on that lead. So what you want to do is I always find that just folding it down and that's why we left, uh, we actually tinned just the top and not the bottom. We got a much, much easier way to put less stress on those on that braid. Now everything is basically set there. Come in again. Here we go. Now you're done. Now we clean it. Okay, come right here. I put a little bit too much cleaner on. Things happen. And you could see as we do that. Now, if you get too much cleaner on, guys, just use the opposite end. Of course, there's not going to be any cleaner on there. Once again, go with the actual uh, grain, so to speak. And you're all set to go right there. Move that out of the way. And you can see, here is our new connector all done. And she came out pristine. Okay. Now, something I like to do, and again, it's up to you, um, just check your leads and see if there's any stress. If there's any stress on anything that's abnormal, if it's pulled one way or pulled, you know, out of being symmetrical, so when you go to apply your actual shell, I would then correct that. That's my own personal preference. Um, and again, some guys will have it leaning a little bit, and you can get away with that. I just don't like any stress on the leads. Again, this is for a client. But um, let's go over and double check. Once again, one is red, two is black, and three, of course, is our ground. Let's just double check that. I always go rules of threes. Believe it or not, uh, I'll double check or triple check everything at least three times. That's my preference again, but you know, Everybody is, is more comfortable doing what they do. Uh, it just depends on who you are. Right now I'm bringing up the actual shell. And you can see this goes on one way. It's got a little dimple right here and it's got a groove inside this connector. Once you align the two, you'll see it'll line up and then we just pivot it and she'll lock into place. And you can see now it's locked. And of course, before we did this, we already checked to make sure our insulator is in place so we know we're good there. Uh, you're all set. Once again, line your dimple up. Boom. 
come over and now it's locked okay now what I like to do you can see we've got a screw here that we want to push in so we're gonna grab and again the soldering mat you get a lot of guys that laugh at this they've said to me because um, it's a basic silicone mat but I love the little pockets for screws because it does hold everything and these little screws are magnetized or, or I should say are able to be magnetized so nothing moves you can see here we come right in here I'm using my electrical screwdriver not a lot of torque required for this of course I'm gonna come in seat the screw done that's it you can see that's locked in and now you can see what I mean by how this cable now has been built we have plenty of casing left we don't need a piece of heat shrink here everything came out as it should we're gonna now bring our rubber grommet in and just carefully roll it up now of course I like to keep my other hand in front of it and the main reason I do is so I can't accidentally slip and go all the way up and put stress on this cable you want to do it real carefully real carefully there we go there we go bring it right in and now what we're going to do is just carefully nudge her all the way up now what I'll do is I bring a, another pick in this one actually has a rounded edge which I really like and I'll just work with this a little bit we'll just push up very gently 98% of cable building is finesse so we're not using you know a lot of brute strength or anything um, you can see here we've got the actual grommet now seated and you'll see that right there everything is set so our stress relief now and the reason we're using the grommet is because this cable is much too small for the stress relief to make contact with therefore making it not effective when we use the grommet we expand the diameter of the cable and being its rubber once it actually compresses you've got a beautiful stress relief and you never have to worry about damaging your cable and we all know that sucks <laughs> and then you have to start over again so now we're going to apply our stress relief this takes a little practice you see it comes right in there bring it over and a magnetic electrical screwdriver certainly helps you here when you're doing this because you do have to get everything aligned perfectly there we go one's in and I'm trying to get my hands out of the way so you can see what I'm doing it's just difficult because these parts are small and two are in now the key is we've got our grommet in we don't want to compress too tight we want the stress relief to be effective but we don't want to compress too tight that we cause any havoc on this cable because again you still can compress really tight much tighter than required go in a little bit on each side I go maybe a quarter to a half a turn on each side at a time so you're trying to apply the stress evenly there we go. you can look at your grommet and she'll kind of talk to you as far as how much stress you have I'm going to go in just a little bit more start getting a little more resistance and you can see it's start, starting to uh, bulge out just a teeny bit I'll come in here and that's inevitable you are going to get some but with that rounded edge on the pick I can mold that right in not hurting anything on my cable we've got a perfect cable here gentlemen go now you can see what she looks like when she's fully assembled and this is now ready to go okay. we're all set and now all the client will have to do is take the opposite end and he will hook this up to his torch and naturally this just will plug in and he's all set with the double shielded uh, uh, protection against EMI i will never have to worry about any potential uh, electrical interference so again guys I hope this video has been helpful um, doing these videos is not that easy I mean I'm I'm doing this in one take believe it or not this is all done live and again it shows how much time I've spent building these cables uh, as you work with them yourself everyone will work at their own pace I highly recommend uh, being in a room that's well lit and that you guys are well relaxed if you haven't worked with this type of cabling or regardless of your skill set or skill level um, just take your time if you guys do have questions which I know will raise many more 
uh, please message me direct at storm2313 uh, gmail.com. That's my direct email. Or you could also go to my e-dealer store, e-dealer direct, and that's on eBay. Both links will be in the description below. To all of my subscribers, I hope these videos are helping you. I know many of you have requested these, and it's been some time. I'm doing my best to kill two birds at one stone, so to speak. I'm working in the shop while I'm actually... Uh, uh, generating these videos again it's not the easiest thing to do because I do need my better half doing my uh, Steven Spielberg effect as far as filming so it just takes time uh, overall guys I want to thank you all for your support take care